Just one small step in the fight against cancer can make a big difference to anyone who's been touched by the disease, which is why one treatment aimed at children is giving rise to some cautious hope. Our cover story this morning is reported by Tracy Smith. I, I, I need to sit right here. At her home in Lynchburg, Virginia, three-year-old Edie Gilger is more familiar with a doctor's bag than any kid should be. What are you doing first? Oh, what's that? It says it's a At six months old, doctors said she had cancer. There we go. They ran these tests and came out and told you what? Yeah. That she had stage four neuroblastoma. And of course, we had no clue what neuroblastoma was. I mean, we didn't even know at that point that it was a cancer. For her parents, Nick and Emily, it was bad news to be sure. Don't worry, diagnosis. But Edie's this still here, and she owes that to advanced diagnosis? research there. and, in a small way, to another little girl with the same disease whom she'll never meet. It's hard to explain. Alex Scott was diagnosed just shy of her first birthday. We first met Alex and her parents, Liz and Jay, in the summer of 2003. Can you sum up what it's been like these past six years? Not quickly. <laughs> <laughs> for Alex, none of the standard treatments, like chemotherapy, worked for very long. So, like most childhood cancer patients in this country, she was given experimental treatments to keep her alive. Even as a kid, Alex knew that all those clinical trials cost real money, so she told her parents she wanted to open a lemonade stand on her front lawn, with the money going to finding a cure. On her first day, she raised $2,000. Why did you decide to do this lemonade stand? Because I wanted to help raise money for cancer research. Why is that important to you? Because it's helping people. As her story got out, Alex's stand became an annual event in her Philadelphia neighborhood and beyond. By the summer of 2004, Alex and her friends across the country had raised close to a million dollars. But even as the money poured in, Alex herself was running out of time. For Liz Scott, it's as painful now as it was then. It became very hard to see treatment after treatment fail and to have her cancer spreading. Um, to places that we knew. There was no turning back. On the first day of August 2004, Alex Scott died. She was eight years old. Her parents vowed not to let her dream of finding a cure die with her. I want some lemonade. Can we interest you in some lemonade for Alex's lemonade stand? Alex Scott's Little Lemonade Stand has become the Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation, having now raised more than $70 million. I've continued to follow the Alex's Lemonade story over the years and volunteer at their annual fundraiser. So far, Alex's foundation has helped pay for nearly 300 cancer studies, some of them here at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. But there was an aha moment. Very One of Alex's doctors, Yale Mose, and her team studied a link between cancer and a hereditary genetic mutation in a gene called anaplastic lymphoma kinase, or ALK. This mutated ALK gene seems to make certain types of cancer grow. So we kind of had a hypothesis in the lab that if we could turn it off, it may turn off the growth of the cancer. It's like the fuel for the cancer. And this can sometimes turn off that mutated ALK gene. It's called crizotinib, a drug already used to successfully treat lung cancer in adults. Mose says that drug therapies like crizotinib only go after very specific types of cancer and can do a lot of good for small groups of patients. We have to be smarter than just giving drugs that kill rapidly dividing cells. We have to give drugs that are turning off something that's driving the cancer. So using money from Alex's lemonade stand and other sources, doctors were able to fast track a federally funded crizotinib trial for nearly 80 children. And the younger kids have tolerated it really beautifully. With few side effects? With very few side effects. And what happened? We saw some pretty dramatic responses in children who have lymphoma that's driven by this gene ALK. When you say dramatic response, what do you mean? We saw the cancer go away within days and weeks. You saw the cancer go away? Go away completely. It didn't help everyone, but for one group with a very specific type of lymphoma, it made a big difference. 
One of them was Zach Witt of Berks County, Pennsylvania, who at age six was fighting for his life. But after only a few days on Krizotnib, Zach got out of his hospital bed to the amazement of his parents, Pam and John. We came home within a few days of that, and he got out of the car and got on his bike and started riding his bike. And we just stood at the car and cried. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> wow. Now, two years later, Zach is still on the drug and as active as any other kid his age. He really is a walking miracle. <laughs> but miracle is an awfully big word. For children with this rare form of lymphoma, it's really quite remarkable. Dr. Peter Adamson heads up the Children's Oncology Group. Is crizotinib a cure? Not yet. I think crizotinib, we hope when added to other treatments, may become a cure. But right now, it is a promising treatment for a small number of children with certain cancers. So I less to hear a heartbeat. And that brings us back to Edie Gilger. After 14 rounds of chemotherapy, Edie's tumor was still growing. And when doctors suggested crizotinib, her parents figured they had nothing to lose. What did you expect? I expected it not to work. Nothing The chemo didn't work. Mm. The surgeries didn't work, so I was just sort of like, all right, well, we'll try it. I'll give anything a shot for three months. After only four weeks on the crizotinib trial, they gave Edie a routine scan to see if her tumor responded and got what might have been the shock of their lives. The radiologist called me and said that her surgery was a success and the tumor is all gone. And I said to the radiologist, she didn't have surgery. We looked at the pictures again and again, and it became very clear that there was uh, no tumor that we could see. You double checked. We double, triple, quadruple checked. <laughs> it is an absolute miracle. Uh, no other way to put it. Again, it wouldn't be a miracle for everyone. Only a small number of patients with Edie's form of cancer responded this well. But for her, it's made all the difference. Oh, here's our card looking for it. She takes crizotinib twice a day. Come here, babe and doesn't seem to mind all the syringes. Six. Six. Still, it's impossible for the Gilgers or any of the other parents in the study to know all if the right. cancer is gone for good. Now go get two M&Mes. If the cancer comes back in these cases, does that mean the treatment was a failure? We don't want to oversell a new treatment, put false hope out there. But every parent who has a child with cancer understands what they're up against. And so when there is reason for hope, hope is very powerful, and we shouldn't stand in its way. There are new, more promising cancer treatments all the time. What does it taste like when you take your medicine? Yucky. Yucky. Yeah. <laughs> but what makes this story special is that one little girl's life has been touched by another little girl who knew how important it was to have just one more day. I thought it was incredible. I just felt like it made Alex's life make a little more sense. Be the Gilgers say they'll tell Edie all about Alex Scott someday. They hope it'll be something she can share with her grandchildren.